Hey everybody, it's the 13th Wolfman. You know what today is? Day 29 of the 31 days of horror. Oh! Yeah. 29, wow. Two days left. 31 movies, 31 days. 31 reviews, 31 videos. You know how it goes. There are other people doing this. Uh, check them out. The one and only MSJ, I am the Ice Lord, Random Horror, Retro Horror, King Gore, Jennifer Toshi, um, who else do we got? Uh, I said I am the Ice Lord, oh, Mood616, Double Shot J, can't forget those two guys, they've been doing it as long as me and, and Brother Max, you know, so, check them out, check out Half Cheetah Will View, and others. So, I want you to like, subscribe, share, <laughs> and comment. <laughs> yes, today we get into the beginning of the beginning of the end for the thirty-one days of horror, and today we start with the first movie. It, well. Let's put it this way. This is an alternate viewing. So, we're going to start with the last movie, which takes place earlier in the series of the Karnstein Trilogy, and that is Twins of Evil. Yes, Twins of Evil. <laughs> yeah, this is a great movie. Um, in this movie, we have, well, twins. Played by Mary and Madeline. I always, I always screw up their last name as Collins' son. I can never. I always want to say Collins Worth, Collins Wood, Collins, but it's Collins' son. Mary and Madeline Collinson play. Well, they're twin sisters that play twin, twin sisters and the niece to, to the local Puritan. You know the god. The God-fearing man. And, um, you got Frida and Mary. Uh, Madeline plays Frida, and, Marie, and, and Mary plays Maria. Their parents are killed, and they go to live with their, with their aunt and uncle in Karnstein. Or Karnstein. How you, however you want to pronounce it. Frida is more of, of the two, Frida is more of a handful. She's to that point in her life where she's ready to, you know, she's a teenager and she's ready to rebel. And she does. She she doesn't want to listen to to Uncle Vile, you know. Um, and, you know, it's like, oh, you have to go to bed at 9 o'clock. She's like, what are we, 10? So she sneaks out at night and she meets the local count. Count Karnstein, who owns this castle up on the hill, and it turns out that the count has has uh, the count's into Satanism. He's the one person in this town that that doesn't fear God. He worships the devil, you know, and he has he has his servants, you know, go out and. Find someone to sacrifice, and it just comes off real hokey. And he even says so. He's he feels that it's more of a charade than anything. He gets really upset one day, and he he kicks all the helpers out. You know, the ones that are supposed to be the Satanists performing the ritual of sacrifice, and you know he tells them to go along with his assistant. And he raises the dagger, and he he pledges his oath to uh, to the Dark Lord himself, and he stabs this girl on this altar. Turns out that the altar isn't an altar, but a tomb, and it's it holds Camilla Karnstein. And her spirit comes up from the uh, from the tomb. She bites him. Count Karnstein becomes a vampire. When Frida meets Count Karnstein, he's a vampire, so he 
passes on the the curse of the vampire to her and from that point on it's basically all about these puritans running around the countryside just going you're a witch you're a vampire you're in a league with the devil and they're them burning him alive you know and it he, until he finally realizes that you know his they try to str they try to string up and kill Frida, but Frida and Maria uh, <clears throat> Frida has uh, has she doesn't really have her, but they they make her trade places with so that if the if uh, Frida is can then be placed by Maria, and if Maria dies on the stake, then Frida's still re running around, you know, with the, with fangs and all that. And Anton, one of the local men who likes Frida, realizes it's not Frida on the, you know, strung up, and goes to save her. And that's when that's when Puritan Uncle Vile, um, kind of gets it. You know, he finally gets it. You can't just run around saying, you're a witch, you're a witch, you're a demon, whatever, you know. But, uh, this is a good movie. This is a fun movie. Hammer put it out. Uh, like I said, it's got, it's got the Collinson sisters in it. It's well worth checking out. Um, and then you have two other movies. So this one, this one was put out last. But the reason I'm watching it now is because, story-wise, it takes place... Year, this takes place in the 1600s. Um, and I believe it's... Uh, Vampire Lovers takes place in the 1700s. And Lust of the Vampire takes place in the 1800s. So, even though... Even though this one came out last, I figured I'd watch it first. Because of the, the progression... These movies were put out in the early 70s. They were done quickly. They were based on Camilla, uh, the Camilla story about this woman that terrorizes the countryside as a as a vampress, you know. And um, Hammer just said, you know what, we'll put one out. Boom. You know, Vampire Lovers. Boom, boom, boom. It did really well. Okay, we'll do Lust of the Vampire. Boom, boom, boom. It did really well. We'll do Twins of Evil. It did really well. I mean, these are like some of the only Hammer vampire films that don't have Dracula involved. So, it's really kind of cool. What uh, Price, I can't think of his name. Peter Cushing's in this. I keep... How, how did I... How did I forget to say anything about that? But yeah, Peter Cushing is in this. This is the Synapse release. Um... I've seen better transfers of movies around from around this time. This one's okay from time to time. It has a little bit of haze to it or grain. It also has um, some lines in it from time to time, but it's well worth having. It is one. Of, it's one of the coolest Hammer films out there. That's all I have to say. Enjoy it. And I am the 13th Wolfman, and I'm on the prowl. Oh!